Hello everyone, and welcome back. You know what I've been thinking to myself lately? After three years of travel, I've been really lucky and fortunate to have been able to visit so many different places in the world that I never thought I'd have the opportunity to go to. So, Chernobyl, magic towns in Mexico like Tequisquiapan and Real de Catorce, and also the middle of nowhere in Kyrgyzstan. And another thing I've also been thinking to myself is the fact that I'm 37 now and I'm a Londoner. So what's one thing that I've never done in my entire life? A tourist day in Paris. Hmm. Well, it's a good job I'm here then. Okay, I'm walking into oncoming traffic right now on the Champs Elysees. Today is Monday, July the 14th. It's summer in Paris, and this is the first of two videos coming from Paris. So if you want to check out the other one, don't forget to subscribe. Also, and in this video, I'm not going to insult your intelligence. I'm not going to do like my normal style video where I talk a lot about history and that sort of stuff because I think everyone knows a bit about Paris. So this video is very much going to be a bit of a sightseeing video, as well as the next one. And um, what are my initial thoughts of Paris? I really like it. I can't believe it. You know, many of you may know from other videos that I'm not always keen on areas that are frequented by tourists a lot. You know, Paris is one of the most visited cities in the world. But you know what? I love this place. It's massive. It's huge. It's bustling. There's architecture everywhere. So much history. I just love it. You know, and as you've seen from that, from that lengthy montage that I already did, I've been to the Louvre. I've been to the big garden behind it, looked at all the architecture and everything, and now I'm walking down the Champs Elysees. And uh, in these two videos, we're going to be having a look around the main tourist sites. You know, it's been so long since I've been able just to be a tourist. It's brilliant. Love in Paris. Now, let's be honest. You've come to this video because you want to see Paris. You don't want to see my ugly face. So we're going to first person perspective. Awesome. So let's have a look down the Champs Elysees. It very much reminds me of a typical, you know, main street through a city like Orchard Road in Singapore, Oxford Street in London, Paseo de la Reforma in Mexico City. You know, all this fantastic architecture, as you can see, all of these shops, you know, high-end names, and also places like Zara, which I absolutely love, Samsung, all these flags all the way down the road, which is a nice touch. I was just chatting to a friend of mine on Instagram, which you can check out down at the bottom of the screen. See what I did there? Seamless. And what I said to her was that it feels like Paris is like a mirror image of London. I think that's one reason why I do like it in terms of just everything. It just feels very much like London in the centre of Paris in terms of the river, the bridges, the architecture, and the fact that it is so touristy. But one thing I want to say in this video is, you know, I've said a lot in the past about the difference between a tourist and a traveller. There's nothing wrong with being a tourist, you know. Take photos, go to the Eiffel Tower. It's not going to be the end of the world, you know? So that's what I'm doing today. I'm being a tourist.
Okay, if you're familiar with Erin's travels, hi Erin, I met up with her in Mexico and did a video with her by the way, and she did uh, a video recently where she talked a bit about the fact that in terms of Mexico for her, she's a US citizen, it was always somewhere that was kind of overlooked in terms of travel and tourism because it was so close in terms of proximity to where she lived. And I think that's one reason why I never came to Paris before. You know, I've been to some places in the world, entitled millennial, um, but Paris I've never been to. I have been to Nice before, I went to Monaco as well, I know, not France, but you know. Um, but I've never been to Paris, and I think it's because of that, because it is close. It, I preferred to go to places that were more far flung, like Asia, Japan, and you know, just seeing the Eiffel Tower earlier from a distance, which is coming in a little bit, was like an iconic, monumental travel moment for me, because it's the Eiffel Tower, you know? It's like for a non-UK citizen seeing Big Ben or something, or the Houses of Parliament. For me right now, I'm in travel amazement mode, which is awesome. I spy with my little eye. Something beginning with F. Ferrari over there. Awesome. Reminds me when I was in Monaco many years ago. Supercars galore. So I had to find somewhere that isn't extremely bright and also windy. I think we're okay here. Hello Arc de Triomphe. This is another iconic travel moment. I never thought I'd be at the Arc de Triomphe. Amazing, and as I said, you know, no research, but I'm trying to remember back to like school. It's like the monument from like the French Revolution and Napoleonic Wars, if I'm right. Yeah, and also First World War, I think. So there's a like a tomb of the unknown soldier. Year nine history class at school is coming back to me, and um, it kind of feels like the um, Monumento de Revolución in Mexico City. It's kind of exactly the same, you know, and um, without the the glass elevator through the middle. And it's interesting because obviously Paris is um, so popular with tourism. As I said, it's one of the most busiest, busiest visited cities in the world. But it's interesting how, you know, in Mexico City, there's a similar monument there. And uh, people don't know about it. Hopefully you do because you've seen my videos. <laughs> but um, yeah, Arc de Triomphe. Wonderful. See what I mean? Sunlight. I really need a wee and a cigarette. But I've got to go to the Eiffel Tower. That is quote of the year. <laughs> okay, I've had a cigarette break. I've had a Starbucks. There's the Ferris wheel that we saw earlier, and it's time to go to the Eiffel Tower. Oh wait, that's not the Eiffel Tower. That is. <laughs> so as you can see, lighting is not on my side at the moment. Lovely blue skies that way. Horrendous this way. I think the Eiffel Tower's coming up. Yeah, it's behind those trees. Tower, iconic moment in my life. I can't believe I'm here. I just hear a German guy say, "Das ist richtig cool." It's really cool, or truly cool, I think. Nine. Es ist alt und langweilig. It's old and boring. I'm joking. I must admit, seeing it close up, a bit of an anticlimax. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, it's old. Obviously, it's a bit plain. It is a bit of a tourist trap. You know, 25 euros to get up to the top. 16 to get up to the second level bit and it's free to get into the garden bit but you know it's still iconic how many times in this video have i said iconic let me know in the comments we're going to try and get in the garden thing i think it's free so i've come in the garden like i said it's free to enter forget the thing i said about anti-climax <laughs> because look at that i think i must have chosen the perfect day to come clear blue skies the sun is shining on the eiffel tower yeah, metal. You can see like it's a bit rusty. You can see the rust on there, I believe. But just look at it, man. I'm in Paris! <laughs> you know, I know you're probably all thinking that, come on, David, it's only the Eiffel Tower. We've all been there. Probably most of you have, but I've never been here. This is my first time at the Eiffel Tower. And I love it. It's one of my travel epic moments, I think, of the year. I honestly thought I would hate Paris, but just coming to tourist sites, it's been enlightening for me today. You're probably also thinking, you know, come on David, pay 25 euros to go up the top, but I would rather come with someone else, you know, romantic setting, and do that with them. Imagine if that ever happened. Imagine if I ever got married. 
let's not think about that right now. Um, yeah, so I have become a tourist today. And there's nothing wrong with it, like I said earlier. I'm quite happy to do this. After three years of going to places and doing all this research and going to these weird and wonderful places that a lot of people don't go to, coming to something like Paris, it's been mind-blowing. It's been so relaxing. I've had a relaxing day today. I can just walk around and not be ashamed about going to the Champs-Élysées and the Arc de Triomphe and taking photos. I might even buy a fridge magnet. Who cares? <laughs> I've had a great day. This has been immense. Bye, Hans. So I hope you've enjoyed my perspective on Paris. I've had a really good day, like I've said. Amaze balls. Apologies for the use of that word. But yeah, this is the first video of two from Paris. So don't forget to subscribe if you would like to see the second one. I'm gonna film that tomorrow. I'm probably gonna to go to somewhere called Montmartre. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm butchering it, sorry. But yeah, one of my English students has um, recommended it. I'm excited. See you in the next video. Don't forget to like, comment as well. Hello, hun. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Catch you later. It almost feels like like East London, you know. Um, any Londoners will know what I mean. It's very ethnic and very diverse. Let my people go. And there's a really nice letter at the bottom that almost touched me a bit. I've been flabbergasted by that, surprised, because I didn't expect it.